You keep on eating between meals and you'll ruin your figure. And, uh, if you keep on fooling around that gorilla, he'll ruin your figure. <laughs> He's a snob. Come on. Really, Jeff, even though Gibraltar likes you, I wish you wouldn't take so many chances with him. Ah, oh, Julie, if I thought that'd make you worry about me, I'd move right into the cage. It might seem a little cramped after that house of yours in Newport. Newport? Where have I heard that before? Oh, I remember that's something in my dim, dark past. Are you sure it's past? Positive. You like running a circus, don't you? I like everything about it. But everything. Mm -hmm. That's what you say now. But the smell of sawdust can get awfully monotonous after a while. Young lady, that's no way to talk to your boss. And now the Wilson Wonder Circus presents a sensationally new modern feature. That outstanding star, that exciting personality, Miss Julie Randall. There's my cue. Point killer. <laughs> Take a bow, don't be modest, don't be shy. Show that far of red look in your eye. Step up with grace and pride. Take that look, 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 look in your stride. Each heart begins to be. Wonderful, isn't she? Yeah, she's all right. But who ever heard of anyone singing with a horse act? Well, the audience likes it. Be gallant. Take a bow. At this time, presenting that muscular marvel, the strongest man in the world, Goliath, the mighty. the mighty Goliath will catch three 100-pound balls shot from cannon. You see, Jeff, I'm in kind of a jam. Hey, Mr. Carter. Just a minute, Tony. Something's come up. I've got to have the 10,000 I loaned you. But it isn't due until Saturday night. That's right, Jeff. But unless you have it for me, I'm afraid I'll have to take the circus over to raise the money. I'm in an awful spot. Well, that won't be necessary, John. I'll have your money for you tonight. You what? Hey, Mr. Carter. Shut up, I'm talking. Did you say tonight? Yes. With today's receipts, I'll have enough to pay you off. I'll give you your money on the circus train tonight. Oh, that's fine. Now, if you please, Mr. Carter. What is it? Can I have a month off next August? What for? Well, you see, I just got a word from my lawyer. He got me a divorce. And one month every year, I win to the custody of my wife's parents. Take it up with Mr. Wilson. What's the matter, boss? That Carter, he making trouble for you? Well, he's doing the best he can. But don't you worry about it, Tony. You know what I say. Whenever you got a business trouble, the best thing to do is to get a lawyer. 
then you got a more trouble, but at least you have a lawyer. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. You can count on me, boss. I ain't got nothing, but you can always have half. Poor Jeff. He's in plenty trouble. 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 This will bring him pretty quick. This is a straight wire? Hey, I think I bent it a little. Hmm. Let's see now. Hey, I watched the idea reading on my telegram. Well, I've got to count the words, don't I? All right. Ten words, 55 cents. 55 cents. Hey, you got us something a little cheaper? Well, we've got regular form telegrams for congratulations. That's 25 cents. Well, that's a fine. Now send them congratulations. You just got a big case. Sorry, congratulatory messages apply only to special occasions. Huh? For example, suppose somebody gets married. That's a quarter. It ain't worth it. No, I mean, suppose your sister had a baby. You'd send her a telegram. What for? She'd know it. Come on, now please take my telegram. Here's the two bits. That's right, Antonio. Don't let anybody on except the crew. I've got a lot of money on the train tonight, so we gotta be careful. I watch you like a hawk, boss. Remember, nobody gets on the train unless he's got a badge. You bet that nobody gets on the train unless they got the badge. Hey, Miss Julie, she's in there. <laughs> Tony, you're a very valuable man. Hello, Julie. Coffee and donuts, a la carte. Jeff, I'm terribly sorry to read the... What kind of about. donuts do you want? The best. Well, you seem pretty chipper for a boy that's just kissed a fortune goodbye. <laughs> Julie. It's been a tough struggle, but the circus is finally showing a profit. And tonight, I'm paying card of the money I owe you. Jeff, why, that's wonderful. Now the show will be all yours again, free and clear. You turned me down before because you said I had enough obligations without a wife. Now the only thing standing in the way of our getting married is you. I don't know why I let you keep on stalling me. I must be crazy. I ought to see a doctor. Hey, get me a doctor. What's the matter? You ain't tasted it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Wilson? Any young man as stubborn as you are should be taught a lesson. And I guess it's up to me to do the teaching. When are we getting married? When? Was I hearing things, Julie? Did you really mean what you said? Every word of it, though. Oh, we'll be married tonight. Oh, no, we can't tonight. There isn't time. Well, well, we'll be married tomorrow. Do you hear, Julie? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Two blind loves, two blind loves, do we know what we're doing, two blind loves? Don't know what month it is or the time of day. Don't know if we're in Brooklyn or in Mandalay. I only know the sun started to shine the day that I looked into your eyes and you looked in. Two blind loves, babes in the wood. We've got it all so bad, but isn't it good? We're on a bumpy road, it's true, but heaven is in view for two blind It's a donut or a wedding cake. I only know the sun started to shine. 
the day that I looked into your eyes and you looked into mine. Two blind loves, babes in the wood. We've got it oh so bad. But isn't it good? We're on a bumpy road, it's true, but heaven is in Where's your... Oh, Miss Julie, it's you, huh? All right, to get on the train? I got a badge. Oh, sure, Jeff. Okay. <laughs> hey, mister. 1875. 1875, that's what I thought. The 1940 models run much smoother. I know you'll think I'm on a scavenger hunt, but I'm looking for Antonio Ferrelli. Mr. Lupol, I'm sure glad to see you. <laughs> well, Tony, you old warhorn. <laughs> I haven't seen you since I stopped taking Scott's emulsion. <laughs> you know, I was afraid you wasn't going to get here in time. Oh. There, you see? Another minute and you missed the train. But now that you're here, everything's going to be all right. Hey, this is a big case. You're going to make a lots of money. <laughs> this is your lucky day, boss. I'll say it is. I don't know what the trouble is, but I'll straighten it out in no time. Well, see you inside. <laughs> Would you mind holding that train still while I try to mount it? I'm sorry, boss. So nobody gets on the train unless they got it the badge. Badge? The badge, yeah. Oh. Oh, badge. <laughs> oh, you mean my Lone Ranger badge. Sorry, they took it back. I stopped eating the cereal. Now let me see your badge. Well, I, I just haven't. You don't got it a badge. Quiet. The engineer may be eavesdropping. Well, the circus is certainly lucky to have you for a watchdog. You old badger, you. Hey, where you going? I'm going to the laundry and get ironed out. I'm rough dry now. Hey, hey, come here. I got an idea. You know my boss, Jeff Wilson? He owns the psychos. He might give you a badge. Say, that's fast thinking. <laughs> I'll see Mr. Wilson. He'll give me a badge and I'll get on the train. Fine. Now, where is Mr. Wilson? He's on the train. On the train? You know, it was awfully nice of you floating this case my way. <laughs> so not. You know, if you hadn't sent for me, I'd probably be home now in a nice warm bedroom, in a comfortable bed with a hot toddy. Huh? That's a drink. That's a too bad. You know, if it was up to me, I'd let you on the trainer like that. Oh! Yeah, but it's not up to me. No, but it's up to my ankles. Hey, Tadpole, you better get out of the water. You're going to get wet. Oh, nonsense. If I was any drier, I'd drown. You better get out of the dampness, my friend. Friend? Show you, my friend. My very best friend. <laughs> Where's your bag? Okay. I know what do you think. Even the seal has got the badge. And just to think, because orders is orders, I can't let them, my best friend, on the train. All right, I take a chance. I don't care if I lose my job. I'm going to give you a badge. I'm going to give you my badge. But a promise. You no tell, you swear. They'll never get anything out of me unless they use a pump. Last chance, all aboard. Aren't you going to wait for Noah? Right this way. Just a minute, brother. Have you got a badge? Of course, naturally. Don't you know no one gets on the train unless he has a badge? <laughs> hey, what are you, a wise guy? That's the last year's badge. Get him up. for the benefit of those who have a retired. <laughs>
you, Julie. I've got some business to attend to. I'll be back in a minute. You thought you had him up against a wall, didn't you? If he pays you off tonight, you're through. Yeah? Well, he hasn't paid me off yet. Professor. Professor. Let's go. The loophole, he's a smart lawyer. Maybe he figured a way out how to fire the strong man. Then you'll be the strong man. <laughs> That's a fine. That's a fine punch. Hey, lawyer, you dressed yet? Well, after a fashion. And a pretty old fashion. And I wish I had an old fashion. Hey, told you I'd get you some nice clothes, huh? It takes a magician to get into this coat. Yeah, that's who I took it from, a magician. Well, let's not split hairs. I'm sick of the whole thing, and I'm going home. Hey, this is a big case. This is a big circus. You're going to get a big fee. Fee? Sure. Tony, you're not only thoroughly detestable, but you're cute. <laughs> then are we friends again? Well, after an old fashion. Yeah, I'd like it. you should meet the boss. Well, well, Mr. Wilson, mighty glad to make your acquaintance. Always wanted to meet you, sir. <laughs> Think you're the greatest circus owner since P.T. Barnum. Isn't it a P.T. we never met before? Hello, Paul. That's not the boss. He isn't? No. Well, he should be. He's the executive type. <coughs> I'll thank you to keep a civil tongue in your head, and not in mine. But well, where is the boss? Hey, Ponchi, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing there? Say, either my coat is inhabited or I'm inhibited. There he goes. Yeah, don't worry, he'll come back. He's a homing pigeon. Fine, I'll keep a light burning in my pocket. But well, where's the boss? Come on, or we find him. <laughs> I wonder you should meet my pal, my best friend. What's your name again? Loophole. Glad to know you. It's your pleasure. Ah, oh, this meeting brings back memories. Childhood days, lemonade, romance. My life was wrapped around a circus. Her name was Lydia. I met her at the World's Fair in 1900, marked down from 1940. Ah, oh, Lydia. She was the most glorious creature under the sun. Thais, Dubarry, Gabo, rolled into one. Ah, oh, Lydia, oh Lydia, say, have you met Lydia? Lydia, the tattooed lady. She has eyes that folks adore so, and a torso even more so. Lydia, oh Lydia, that encyclopedia. Oh Lydia, the queen of tattoo. On her back is the Battle of Waterloo. Beside it, the wreck of the Hesperus too. And proudly above waves the red, white, and blue. You can learn a lot from Lydia. <laughs> When a robe is unfurled, she will show you the world if you step up and tell her where. For a dime you can see Kankakee or Paris or Washington crossing the Delaware. <laughs> Muscles start relaxing Up the hill comes Andrew Jackson Lydia, oh Lydia, that encyclopedia Oh Lydia, the queen of them all For to bit she will do a mazurka in jazz With a view of Niagara that nobody has And on a clear day you can see Alcatraz You can learn a lot from Lydia la, la, la. and see Buffalo Bill with his lasso. Just a little classic by Mendel Picasso. Here is Captain Spaulding exploring the Amazon. Here's Godiva, but with her pajamas on. Here is Grover Whalen unveiling the Trilon. Over on the west coast, we have Treasure Island. Here's Najinsky doing the rubber. Here's her social security number. Oh, Lydia, oh, Lydia, that encyclopedia. Oh, Lydia, the champ of the world. 
She once swept an admiral clear off his feet. The ships on her hips made his heart skip a beat. And now the old boy's in command of the fleet. For he went and married Lydia. I said Lydia. He said Lydia. They said Lydia. We said, said Lydia. Lydia. La, la. in the next car with the gorilla. They should be very happy together. Hey, Jeff, are you here? Hey, boss, what's the matter? Huh? What happened here? Here, he's lift him up here. Here, take oh. the other side. I'll take this side. Come on, lift him. Come on, put him down here in the trunk, huh? Oh. That's it. Now. Hey, somebody hit him. Oh, I'm all right. Who's this? I'm got an alibi. I, I wasn't here. Uh, it's a lucky thing you were hit tonight. He's a lawyer. Feeling better, Mr. Wilson? It's gone. What? It's been stolen, my $10,000. $10,000? That man's hurt bad. St stand back and give him air. You lose the $10,000? He didn't lose it. It was stolen. I gotta get that money back and quick. Hey, oh. never mind the $10,000. Oh. You go to bed. He's right for once. Come go on, ahead. let me help you, huh? Here, come on. I'll take hey. you through here, huh? Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, we stay here. We find the money. Hey, Punchy. We gotta find the Jeff's money. Look, we do like a detectives. We re-destruct the crime. <whistles> All right. Now pay attention. I'm a Jeff. You're the crook. Oh, it's just acting. You know what I mean, acting. <laughs> hey, what do you call? What do you call? Hey, Bunchy, look out! Bunchy, that's no act. You crazy. We act out of the case like they do in the police station. Now, you've been in the police station. Wanted. 50 cents the reward for jaywalking. 50 cents. You see, crime doesn't pay. All right, now look, Bunchy. I come in. You follow me. I don't know you're there. Now, I take out of my money. I count it. What happens? Punchy, that's a water for you. All right, then we change it. This time, you're Jeff. I'm the crook. That's all right. This time, I'm the crook. Punchy, I... I better break in this case before you break in my head. All right, I solve this case for myself. Now, you stand there. You watch me. I'm a Jeff. I take out of my money. I count it. Now, what happened? Oh. Now, you've got nothing to worry about, Mr. Wilson. With the thief on the train and the legal eagle on the case, the money is practically in your pocket. Just uh, keep an eye on your pocket. Oh, 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 no, you don't. Oh, but I've got Oh, you. no, there's no use talking, Jeff. Money or no money, you're not going to get up. But you don't understand. If that thief gets away with that $10,000, I lose everything. Sorry, but there's nothing you can do about it now. You've got to get some sleep. And then in the morning, you'll feel a lot better. Yes, and a lot poorer. Does it matter? You got anything? Yes, a bump on the head. How can you tell? Hey, you know what I think? The guy who hit Jeff on the head and knocked him out didn't like him. Don't let's jump at concussions. Does anybody around here look suspicious aside from you? Uh, Mr. Carter, the manager. He's been making trouble. Carter, eh? Yeah, but he no steal of the money. He's a too smart for that. You know who I think is steal of the money? He's a friend, Goliath. He's a dumb. Well, the legal eagle is on his track, and if he's guilty, he'll have to prove it. That's what? Hey, you said you was on Goliath's track. Well, this is a detour. I'll grill her until she's well done. She must know something, even if it isn't about the case. She's innocent. Now then, where's Goliath? In the next car. Where is he? Here it is. But I think I ought to tell you. You'll tell me nothing. It's my job to get the facts. This fellow will face the shrewd, relentless grilling of the juggernaut of justice. The chasm over the courthouse. The black stone of the bar room. Now watch the eagle swoop down. Who is there? You'll find out, my fine feathered felon. Oh, do it. 
Goliath? I'll get to the bottom of this. Well? Wrong room. I'm Goliath. Who are you? Uh, uh, me? Oh, uh, just a little nobody who wears glasses. I, I, I can hardly see a lick. Who is this guy? That's a Mr. Loophole. He's a lawyer. A lawyer? Isn't that silly? I, I, I've been disbarred for years. I can show you my cancer diploma. Smart guy, hmm? How would you like I should break you in two? Uh, could I uh, file separate income taxes? Just what do you want? Well, uh, frankly, Mr. Goliath, when I see a wrong done, I can't rest until it's righted, that's all. And uh, so, well, I brought Tony here to, to, to apologize, that's what. Tony, I want you to tell this, this lovable chap that you're sorry. All right, Mr. Goliath. I'm sorry you knocked out Jeff Wilson and stole his money. <laughs> <laughs> This coat is haunted. Hey, maybe I'm Captain Flag. He's as innocent as a newborn babe. And much bigger. Well, that settles it. Now we gotta look for a new suspect. Yes, and a new lawyer. Hey, you're not gonna quit. As of now. Yeah, but this guy Goliath, don't be afraid of him. He's a muscle bound. Yes, and I'm homeward bound. How are we gonna get it back Jeff's ten thousand dollars? It's very easy. Offer reward of fifteen thousand. Easy, easy, sure. Frighten you, Mr. Lupo? No, nothing ever frightens me. <laughs> I used to take rumba lessons by mail. Every time I hear the whistle, I think it's the postman with another lesson. <laughs> Jeff has finally fallen asleep, so I came looking for you. Has anything developed? No, everything's under control, except my pulse. Well, you'll never know how grateful Jeff is for what you're doing. Oh, it was nothing at all. You know, if you can straighten this out, it'll mean a great deal to, well, to both of us. Both of you? Oh, I get it. You and Jeff. Jeff and you. Ah, young love, a maiden distress. Fear not, my lady. A loophole never deserts a sinking ship, even if it's a train. Thank you. I'll have this case straightened out before sunrise, before the rooster crows, before this flower fades. Here, my lady. If we only had the clue. I don't need a lawyer. All we need is a clue. That's a matter. I ain't no smoke of this brain. I gotta find her the clue. What are you doing? I know. You smoke of the cigar, you knock yourself out. But that's a no good. I gotta find her the clue. Where I find the clue? Huh? Gibraltar? Hey, you crazy. Gibraltar, the smoke of cigars. I gotta find her the clue. Now, where I find... There's a head I'd like to have over my fireplace. I got it! A fractured skull, I trust. No, a clue. A clue? Yeah. Punchy find of the cigar right where Jeff was knocked out. Great! Now then, who on this train smokes cigars? Or heavy underwear? I know! The stronger man, the Goliath! Oh, nonsense. It wouldn't be him. His, his public wouldn't like it. Well, we gotta think of somebody else. Wait, I got him this time. The midget. A midget? Yeah. A small midget? A small midget. That's our man. Are you sure? Can you prove that he's the one that smoked the cigar? We'll compare smells, and if they're alike, this is the rope that'll hang him. Adieu. Adieu. Now, Spencer, you stay outside. Let Lupo do the talking, and you keep quiet. I see that you remember that. Oh, shh. Now, all we got for a clue is this cigar, bud. So I'll trap him into offering us one of his cigars. Now, if his cigar matches this one, He's unquestionably guilty. That's all right. Now, we mustn't let him up or after. All right, I won't say anything. I know that, but don't talk either. Shut up. Shut up. What do you want? Oh, sure. We come in if you insist. Is this a friend of yours? I should say not. He's a lawyer. Oh, yeah? Yeah, what? Why? why, do you want to make anything out of it? Try to bully me. I'll lick you the best day you ever had. What brings you here? Oh, nothing important. We just want to trap you into a confession. Confession? I swear, Einstein, that's what I call using strategy. I know my stuff, eh? It's uh, kind of late to be visiting, isn't it? Well, we just happened to be passing your house and we saw a firefly burning in your window. Did you lose this? Why, no, I didn't lose it. Where'd you find it? Never mind that. Are these your teeth prints? No. Well, Tony, 
I guess we're linked. I guess so, boss. The man is undoubtedly innocent. Well, no hard feelings. Oh, none at all. Let's shake on it. By the way, uh, I'm all out of smokes. Do you happen to have a spare cigar on you? Here! I got a one. I got a one for you, too. And for myself. Thanks, sir. Let me get your light. Why don't you trade your head in on a bowling ball? Don't you realize that I'm trying to get incriminating evidence? Now, let's smoke these up quickly, and then I'll ask him for one of his cigars. Sure, right. well, boy. No, thanks. Bad luck. Three on a midget. Ah, uh, that's a superstitious. Has anybody got a match? I asked for a match, not a forest fire. Hey, what's going on here, anyway? Oh, uh, by the way, uh, do you happen to have a spare cigar on you? Hey, I think I got one. Yeah. You're a big help, you are. I'll clean up this case if you'll keep quiet. Last time I saw that match, there was apples growing on it. Oh, you got the apples too, huh? Hey, you know hitting Jeff on the head and stealing his money, that ain't playing ball. I bet your father spent the first year of your life throwing rocks at the store. Yeah. I know how to get rid of you. Smoke one of your own cigars. Hey, I don't think I got any more. Good, what a break. Now I'll make him confess. Oh, by the way, uh, do you happen to have a spare cigar on you? Hey, wait a minute. I find one. It's the last one I got, but you can have it. Oh, I uh, couldn't think of it. I couldn't think of taking oh, your last cigar. Oh, go no. ahead. No, it's I... all right. Well, I've carried many a torch, but never on such a large scale. Do you realize if Jeff had been hit a little harder, the charge would have been murder? Pronounced murder? <laughs> wow. Yes, a murder. How would you like to go to Sing Sing and get her the high chair? You better not lay a hand on me. You ain't the law. You're right. We haven't got anything on anything on you. Okay, anyone can make a mistake. No hard feelings. No, no, not at all. Let's shake on it. Oh, uh, let's smoke on it, eh? Oh, heck, I, uh, I seem to be all out of cigars. Uh, you don't happen to have a spare cheroot on you, do you? Hey, I find one more. Are you lucky? I thought this cigar was in my other suit. I wish you were in your other suit, and your other suit was being pressed. No, mangled. I just remember, this is my other suit. Hey, you know these cigars are imported? They're hard to get. I haven't any trouble getting them. Not with that plantation under your vest. Hey, boss, you're not getting any evidence. No, but I'm getting tobacco hot. You better tell the truth, half the truth, and nothing but the truth. That's you! I told you to eat cornflakes for breakfast, not the golden rod. Yeah. What are you guys trying to wreck my house? Wait till the finance company sees this furniture. Are uh, you going to get it? You fellas got no right coming here ready to set the rumpus. I don't win the rumpus. I'm going to sue you. Say, if you need a good lawyer, I'm your man, Chief of Loophole. <laughs> hold it! Hold it! <laughs> I stand in the rain and he sneezes. be mine. No, that's definite. They're not mine. Go away. What? Go out from under your life? Get away. Playing piggyback at my age. You're the prettiest millstone I ever had around my neck. Pretty fool. We'll be very happy together if my back holds out. Put me down. Hey, Mr. Loophole, have you met Peerless Pauline? No, why, how do you do? Put me down, you fool. Oh, well, reluctantly. All right, let her go. 
Careful, man. You're talking to the woman I love. Yeah, well, Carter loves her, too. She's his girl. Hey, I just thought of something. Maybe Carter knows something about the stolen money. And if Pauline's his girl, maybe she knows of something, too. Well, if she doesn't, it'll be fun teaching her. Legal, legal. Here it is, babe. The whole ten grand. Why don't you quit that while I'm talking to you? I gotta break in these new shoes. I nearly fell today. Well, I'll break them in some other time. Hey, uh, take care of this money. I think that lawyer suspects me, and I don't want to have it on me. All in! Yoo-hoo! There he is. I bet he's up to something. Go on, get out of here. I'll handle him. Well, be careful. Find out if he knows anything. It's me, or it's I. Well, at any rate, it's one of us. Come in. Pauline, are you home? Are you home? What do you want? If this is a spirit reading, I'd like something good in the fourth at Belmont. Hello, brown eyes. Hello, brown. Oh, <laughs> say, you're up early today, aren't you, huh? You're like a beautiful chandelier. I'd like to be around when you get lit up. What brings you here? Oh, uh, lots of reasons. Ten thousand reasons. What are you doing? Oh, don't mind me. Uh, I'm just a talent scout for Alcatraz. Let me phrase it more delicately. Where were you when Jeff got bopped on the conch and clipped for his role, babe? Why, Mr. Loophole, surely you don't think that I had it. Dad, no. Anyone who looks at you can see that you're not, uh, hiding anything. You're a lawyer, aren't you? Uh-huh. Say, tell me you're a great lawyer. Who does? Not my clients. Certainly not the ones that were hung last week. <laughs> Have you solved your case? What case? Why, whatever case you're working on. Oh, let's not sit here and talk about little me. Let's talk about little you. Have you deposited $10,000 in the bank lately? Why, whatever made you say that? Well, you know what the French say, uh, cherche la femme. Find the footprints. Peanut brittle? No, thanks. Well, there's no point in my staying here. Oh, don't go, please. Perhaps you'll think I'm forward. But last night, when I first saw you... And slammed the door in my face. I realized that you're the man I've been dreaming of. What do you eat before you go to bed? I've waited so long to find someone like you. Oh, someone like me? I'm not good enough for you, eh? Oh, don't say that. I'm not good enough. Well, you ought to know. But I, I really have to go. Oh, I, don't go. Uh, no, I... Oh, no, please. I, I can't stay right... Oh, no, stay. No, I, I'd on. love to stay, Oh, yes, please, really, stay. Your father wasn't by any chance an octopus, was he? Oh, no. No, I, I really have to go. Oh, I'll, don't go, please. I'll be right back. Oh. I'm back. So sorry you have to go. The thing I like about you is that money doesn't go to your head. I hope you solve the case you're working on. Well, it's out of my hands. This has been a private investigation, but right now I could use the long arm of the law. Law? Oh, but you don't have to go right now, do you? Well, there's nothing to keep me here that I can see from this angle. But we... why, we hardly know each other. I can be very entertaining if I want to be. There must be some way of getting that money without getting in trouble with the Hayes office. Will you, uh, walk in your hands? Silly boy, of course not. All right, forget about it. Will you, uh, will you walk on the ceiling? And when I'm on the ceiling, you'll run out and call. <laughs> you'll run away. Oh, that's the farthest thought from my mind, so, so help me the law of gravity. All right, I'll walk on the ceiling if you will, too. Oh, no, no, no thanks. I'll, uh, I'll set this one out. <laughs> I'm just an old groundhog. I shouldn't even be out until February. But it's so easy. The bottom of the shoe creates a suction that holds you up on the ceiling. No, no, I'd rather not. I have an agreement with the house flies. The flies don't practice law, and I don't walk on the ceiling. Oh, you'll love it. Come on, Chief. Are, are you sure you we're not oh, being too hasty? No. After all, I am just a boy. You're, you're a trooper, an aerial star. Yes. Well, you could be, too. You're tall, you're strong. You're a nearsighter. Hurry, Cheever. You're not fooling now. You will walk on the ceiling. With you, only with you. Don't look now. No peeky weeky. I'll bet you're laughing at me inside. And 
to think I might have roamed the whole world over and never found you. Ready, darling? I know I'm going to hate myself for this in the morning. Why, you look like a million. I'll settle for 10,000. Uh, suppose you go first. Why? Well, in case you fall, I'll be here to pick it up. Oh, no, let's go up together. Well, that's your best offer, but I'm not making a nickel on it. Once you do this, you'll never forget it. You know, the last time I stood in the ceiling was at a lodge meeting. The chairman had the floor. How am I doing here? Careful, Cheever, careful. Well... You don't want to reach over and hold this thing, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, now. Lift your body and clamp your foot on the ceiling. to you, Mrs. Murphy. Help! Help! There, I knew you'd like it. Say, I like this. I never thought we'd be hanging around together. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this check. I see. Oh, Pauline. Let's never lose this thrilling moment. Think of it, you and I, heels over head in love. Do you run back? No. Oh, come on, let's stay. Aha! Pennies from heaven. Hey, Pauline, help me down. Pauline, let me have that wallet. Oh, Pauline, I'm stuck up. Paul, let, 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 let me down. Pauline, how do I get out out of here? Pauline, quick, quick. Help, help, Pauline. Help. Get me down, Pauline. Pauline, fall, Pauline. Help me down. Get me off the ceiling. Help. Help! Help! I've been stuck up! Julie! Come in! Hi there, Mr. Wilson. Telegram for you. Oh, thanks. Excuse me. It's nothing important. Julie, why don't you take that job? Job? What job? With the miracle shows. I, uh... Heard they made you an offer. Dad, I'm turning that down. Maybe you better take it. It looks as if the Wilson Wonder Circus is going to have to do without Wilson. I, uh, I might not be the best boss in the world, but I don't think you like working for Carter. I don't intend to work for Carter. I'm leaving when you leave. But where will you go to? Where you go? Don't you want me to, Jack? Oh, sure, I... Well, look, Julie, uh... Uh, this isn't easy for me, but, well, I've made plenty of mistakes, I guess, but I don't want to make another. You once said that uh, we belong to different worlds. Well, you're right. You're a success. When I leave here, I, I won't even have a job. Things will work out for you. I know they will. Well, until they do, until I can pay the bills, I'm not going to drag you to any preacher. Well, you're... Pretty heavy, but suppose I drag you. Well, Jeff? I don't think I'd enjoy life as Mr. Julie Randall. You better wire a miracle show as you're going to take that job. Well, I guess Emily Post was right. A girl should never propose to a man. <laughs> you're some lawyer. You come here to help with Jeff and the Julie. You know what happened? Eh? What happened? Come, come, you know as well as I do. And you know better. We've got to think. Oh, we tried that. Well, let's review the case. One Jeff Wilson owes $10,000. Or well, let's put it another way. $10,000 is owed by one Jeff Wilson. It's a clear case of Jeff Wilson owing $10,000. Yeah, which he ain't got. Brilliant deduction. Only that Mrs. Dukesbury would help him out. Mrs. Dukesbury. Yeah, she's Jeff Sand. The rich Mrs. Dukesbury? Page one of the Social Register? The Newport branch of the United States Mint? That money is Jeff's aunt? Uh -huh. I usually say aunt, but I'm showing off on account of the monkeys. Yeah, but she wouldn't lend Jeff the money. Hey, wait, I got an idea. You go to Newport and ask Mr. Dukesbury for the money. Oh, fine. I mean, if Mr. Dukesbury's alive, you could ask him. But he's dead. He's dead, eh? Then why don't you ask him? Mrs. Dukesbury, America's wealthiest widow. 
than yours truly who could certainly use the money for Jeff. Don't tell this to Jeff, but his troubles are over. Goodbye, Mr. Chimps. Ah, uh, let him go. We solved this case of myself. Punchy, I'm going to my tent where I can think. You come over later and wake me up. From the alley, they rally round Swing Alley. He waves that Toscaninian hand, and zoom zoom goes the cymbals, and soon Swing Alley sways. The basses thump, the thousands of trumpets sound in their rays. Mr. Swing Alley, tell me, is he man or maestro? Zoom zoom goes your heart when he's in command. Give that man a hand. When he gives a dumping, they swing us up low. something for me, play it loud and call it. Thank you. 
Where's like iron? Now then, uh, where's old Lady Dukesbury's room? I beg your pardon. Mrs. Dukesbury could not be disturbed by anyone. Fine, I don't want to be disturbed either. You can't go up there. Who, who are you? Who am I? Mr. Dukesbury. Mr. Dukesbury? But I understood Mr. Dukesbury had passed away. Oh, just a typographical error. Passed out. What a brawl that was. Well, here I am. After the brawl is over. Well, I'll inform Mrs. Dukesbury that you're here. Never mind, I'll tell her myself. What's her room number? Never mind, I'll find it. I've been in bigger hotels than this. And with better looking clerks. Oh, no, no. Mrs. Dukesbury, yoo-hoo! What in the world? Well, what is the meaning of this? Keep your sheet out. I'm looking for old lady Dukesbury. Oh, yeah, Mrs. Dukesbury. Snookums! Oh, gracious. I don't know you. You mean you've, you've forgotten? Well, I... I know. You have forgotten. Yes. Those June nights on the Riviera, where we sat neath the shimmering skies, moonlight bathing in the Mediterranean. We were young, gay, reckless. The night I drank champagne from your slipper. Two quarts. It would have held more, but you were wearing inner soles. Oh, Hildegard. My name is Susanna. Let's not quibble. It's enough that you've killed something fine and beautiful. Oh, Susanna. Oh, Susanna. Oh, won't you fly with me? For I need $10,000, cause the sheriff's after me. Get out of this room or I'll scream for the servants. Let the servants know. Let the whole world know about us. You must leave my room. We must have regard for certain conventions. One guy isn't enough. She's got to have a convention. Oh, Susanna, Susanna, at last we're alone. Couldn't the two of us be, oh, how shall I say it, uh, a man and a, and a woman? There, I said it. Oh, Susanna, if you only knew how much I need you, not because you have millions. I don't need millions. I'll tell you how much I need. Have you got a pencil? I left my typewriter in my other pants. Shh, shh, that's Whitcomb. What'll I do? I'll call him off. No, no, you mustn't. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Oh, dear. Well, Succotash, what's eating you? I beg your pardon, sir, but Monsieur Lafontaine of the Concert Bureau has phoned to say that all arrangements are complete. The maestro will be here on time. That's fine. Here's a dime. Get yourself a clean shirt. He's going to get himself a clean shirt. This is a notary. I'll say it is. That Whitcomb is a fine butler. I phoned you five hours ago, and he gives you the message now. Why? You're, you're not Monsieur Lefontaine. What do you mean I'm not Monsieur Lefontaine? Do I go around saying you're not Monsieur Lefontaine? Oh, oh, it must be wonderful to be associated with such a great artist as Jardinet. Oh, it is a pushover. Did you say Jardinet? Why, of course. Now, be sure, when the novelty docks tomorrow in New York, the Jardinet and his entire orchestra come directly here. This bedroom will be awfully crowded. Say, uh, Susie, hiring a world-famous guy like, uh, what's his name, that'll run into money. I realize that. I didn't expect him to play at my party for nothing. You'll get your check tomorrow night as we agreed. Uh, tell me, Mrs. Dukesbury, suppose through some strange Quaker fate that uh, Jardinet couldn't get here. Would you be interested in any other form of entertainment? Say, some novel surprises, wrapped in sawdust? Why, it's unthinkable. Jardinet must get here. After all, $7,500 for one night's entertainment is a lot of money. Mm hmm? $7,500 is a pretty penny, but, uh, my client needs $10,000 for reasons that should be pretty obvious by now. Susanna, I, uh, I hate to bring up money matters in a bedroom, but, uh... But what? Well, uh, just write me out a check for $10,000 and everybody will be happy, including the gorilla. And I do mean you. But we agreed on $7,500. Ah, but you do not know about the rate of exchange. You see, in La Belle France, $7,500 is uh, over 150,000 francs. While in this country, $7,500 is, uh, well, $7,500. That is a fluctuation. <laughs> Very well. Anything to make the party a success. Ah, this will be the most successful surprise party you have ever given. But it's not a surprise party. Well, you bet. Well, 
By this time tomorrow, you'll be in Chicago. Then what? It's really a swell break for you, Julie. The Miracle Shows have a fine outfit. Yep. Well, they're going to be crazy about you. Yep. What are you going to do, Jeff? Oh, I'll have plenty to do. Six days a week, I'll think about you. And on Sunday, I'll look for a job. Fine chance you'll have of finding a job on Sunday. That's just the point. No job on Sunday, so I'll have six more days to think about you. When Sunday comes around, no job. I'll have six more days. What were you doing to blind loves? Don't know what month it is or the time of day. Don't know if we're in Brooklyn or in Mandalay. I only know the sun started to shine. The day that I looked into your eyes and you looked in. Blind loves, babes in the wood. We've got it all so bad, but isn't it good? We're on a bumpy road, it's true, but heaven is in view. For Sleeping? With all of this trouble, with the Jeff are going to lose at the circus tomorrow night, how can you fall asleep? Oh, you're kind of sheep, huh? How many sheep will you have to count before you fall asleep? One? Hey, you're an insomaniac. You know, Punchy, we look every place for the money. But there's one place that we don't look. That's a Goliath's room, yeah. Hey, wait. You run away too, huh? like the lawyer. You're a coward. No, 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 no. You're not a regular coward. <coughs> You're a brave coward. Hey, Punchy, Punchy. Tell me, how does Goliath sleep? Oh, with his eyes closed. Eh? That's a noose. <coughs> hey, what I mean is, does he sleep for good? Oh, like a top, eh? I get so wise. That's fine. Now look, we got a work to do. Get in your clothes. Come on. Now this is Goliath's room. Keep it quiet. Hey, he's a sleeper like a baby. <laughs> Baby on the treetop, when the wind blows, the cradle she rock, rock a bye, baby on the treetop. Now we gotta look for the money. I think it's better we wake in the dark. We gotta wake fast. I look over there. You look over there. If anything happens, we meet right here. That's a fine one. Goodbye, baby, on the treetop, when the windows... Quick, hide!
in a hurry. Maybe sleeping on it. If the bow breaks, the baby she fall. We collect insurance money and all. Rock, 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 rock. You look under the blanket. Go on. in the mattress. Jeff Wilson on the train. Why, well, I'm Jeff Wilson. Why? Yeah, well, long distance been trying to get you all along the line. Long distance? Yeah. You've used his telephone, young man. Ask for the Newport operator. Newport? Yes. Hello, Jeffrey. This is the Legal Eagle. I'm calling from Dukesbury Manor. Never mind what I'm doing here. I've got a great scheme. Now listen. No. How much? 10,000. She thinks she's getting Chardonnay in his orchestra. 
But I have a sneaking suspicion Chardonnay is not going to show up. Oh, if we can only get away with it. Certainly. You'll play the circus right on your aunt's front lawn. Be very quiet while you're setting the tents up. And keep the elephants out of the flower bed. Okay. You take care of that in, and I'll have the circus there by tomorrow night if it's the last thing I do. Oh, boy! Operator. Operator! Get me the steamship Normandy. Where is it? It's in the water. Why, I can't believe it. But I tell you, the man's name is not Jardinet. His real name is D.T. O'Connor. Ah, oh, there must be some mistake. Are you sure? I'm positive. It's the biggest dope ring in years, and Jardinet is the head dope. Now keep him in the brig until I can dig up some more dope. This is Operator 77B signing off. That is all. to be a riveter on the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh. There you are. Thank you. Now then, tell me, how do you like the bandstand? I had it built especially for Jardinet. Do you think he'll like it? If he ever sees it. Yes, Whitcomb? Pardon me, madam, but here are the seating arrangements for your final approval. Oh, no, Whitcomb. Judge Chenock will sit on my left hand. And you will sit on my right hand. How will you eat? Through a tube? 376, 377, 378, 379, 388, 381, 382, 383, 384, 385, 386, 387, 388, 389, 390, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 398, 399, 400. They all showed up. Looks like no second helpings. Ladies and gentlemen, in behalf of our gracious, charming, and lovely hostess, I say to you, good evening, friends. Oh. And now, let's lap up the vittles. Control yourself. Control. Tony, find Mr. Lupo. Tell him we'll be ready in five minutes. Sure, Jeff, five minutes. Five minutes. Uh, Monsieur de Fontaine? What is it, my little smorgasbord? It's five minutes of ten, and they're not here yet. Well, it takes time. You know how elephants are. Elephants? Who said anything about elephants? Give me that. You've had quite enough of this. Oh. Quite enough. Elephants at your age. And uh, since Mrs. Dukesbury and her checkbook are entirely responsible for this magnificent shindig, I suggest we give the kid a great big hand. I, uh, I'm sure Marie Antoinette would like to say a few boring words. Can I quote you on that? Relax, your entertainment is practically ready. Now go on, get in there and fight. You should cut out starches. Please, hurry. Psst. Say, have you got a slow leak? Now, if no one cares for more coffee, we'll all be going. I'll have another cup of coffee. Don't leave me, Susanna. Can't you see that I love you? There, you dragged it out of me. I love you. All of you. Oh. I love you feverishly. Have you got a thermometer on you? <laughs> not here, monsieur. Not here. Oh, I can't help it. It's just the animal in me. You get it? No, I don't care what you do as long as the show don't go on. Now get going. Come on. So Carter has friends. You better beat it. Says you. Oh. Thanks, Punchy. Just in time. Hey, stop that. Stop that. Help! Help! Police! Punchy! Hey, stop that. Stop that. Help! Police! Punchy! Help! Help! Punchy! Get... Punchy! Oh. Get him, Punchy! Atta boy! Hey, I 
I bet Carter's behind this. Let's find them. So, it's you. I fix you. Haven't you had enough coffee? My guests are waiting. Yes, I, I think I've had enough. Very well, then. We'll all be going. I think I'll have another cup of coffee. It's awfully good, isn't it? Oh. Now, don't worry, the entertainment is right on tap. Are you sure? Where is Jardinet? Oh, I knew there was something I wanted to tell you. He isn't coming. What? I am Jardinet. Jardinet! Oh! <laughs> I cross the ocean. I am called a dope ring. I race on a train. When I get here, what do I find? Animals. Animals! Animals? Animals? Mrs. Dukesbury's friends are my friends. Oh. I'll take care of him. Mr. Lippard, please be careful. Animals, and please. This is the most incredible thing that has ever happened. You're all upset. Why don't you go back to Paris and lie down? Jardinet Symphony never has been so humiliated. I have a notion not to play. That's an excellent notion. Come on, I'll put you on the bus. But I have given my word. I will play. Yes, I will play. Of course you'll play, but you'll play on the bandstand down on the water. On the water? But my audience. Don't worry. You start playing, they'll come down in spite of it. Mrs. Dukesbury's idea. Crazy Americans. We're ready, boss. Fine. Uh, take this bearded symphony down to the bandstand and see that he gets a good send-off. Okay, boss. Now I know you'll all be thrilled. Jardinet's opening number will be Beethoven's somber and spiritual first movement of his second concerto. Album three, opus four. And number five in the hit parade. Oh. get their sweethearts one ring for an engagement, I got you three rings. A circus. I'll be a laughing stock. I see it all now. My nephew did this to humiliate me. You mean he did you a favor? I was afraid Jardinet wouldn't get here, so I wired Jeff to come and help us out. And uh, he's doing rather well, don't you think? Step up and take a bow. Don't be modest. Don't be shy. Show that thoroughbred look in your eye. Step up with grace and pride. Take that um pa um pa um pa pa in your stride. My heart began to beat in rhyme. Um pa pa um in three quarter time. You charm me like that Lorelei when you waltz by. You took. My heart, and now here's to love. Take a bow. Oh, 
And then you gave him, they'll eat this up, sawdust and all. But how about Chardonnay? Probably on his way back to Paris. Show is over. And this show ain't over yet. <laughs> and uh, now, kiddies, if you'll all pull up your chairs, Susie would like to mumble a little double talk in Esperanto. <laughs> Here you are, sugar. <coughs> my dear, dear friend, I'm thrilled to know. He, he might kill someone. That's his business. I'm stopping the show. I don't want no part of this. Is it all there? 